when the, the jet was first developed just around the Second World War, before the Second World War, the, um, the efficiency of that engine and its, uh, you know, its, its capabilities and its fuel consumption has literally been controlled by how hot you can run the engine. And the hotter the hotter the better. The hotter the engine, the greater the efficiency, the lower the fuel cost, and so forth. And that has been controlled virtually primarily by the materials that you make the engine out of. And so, as you if you track the performance of jet engines since the 1940s, you can track the it tracks almost perfectly with the temperature which the materials inside the engine can be used. The main focus of uh, studying these materials is. Uh, for applications in ultra high temperature environments, uh, really hostile environments, for example, those, fa uh, those faced by the components in a aerospace materials, aerospace uh, components, uh, aircraft engines or turbine blades. So for those kind of applications where you have these hostile environments, we would like to see what the material has to undergo and how it behaves in those circumstances. There are other applications of these materials, which would be for energy, and particularly for power turbines, the turbines that generate electricity. The harder you run it, the less pollution, and the more efficient. Okay. We are working on ceramic matrix composites, and these materials uh, basically are inherently brittle when they are uh, monolithic. Uh, so to impart toughness to these materials, we employ strategies that are usually employed by nature in natural materials, for example, teeth or bone, where you have hierarchies and hybrid microstructures that impart toughness to the materials. The, the one that's the most interesting now and has the most potential is silicon carbide um, reinforced with a silicon carbide fiber. And the way this works is the matrix of the main body of the material is still a ceramic. It still breaks catastrophically, but the fibers tend to not break until later. So the material doesn't break catastrophically. It's held together by the fibers. And then at some later date, if the stresses get very much higher, the fibers would break and the material would fail. But you've got that region where you can see if something's going to go wrong. It gives you an, an, um, a region of safety. These materials are very three-dimensional. They're not just there. They often contain weaves of, of ceramic fibers. And you can't look at them with an with, um, electron microscope just because it's a two-dimensional thing. You need to look at them in three dimensions. You have to see what happens in three dimensions. So we, we then came over to the ALS and talked to the beamline scientists here. And, um, Principi Alistair McDowell, and I thought it would take three or four iterations before this was going to work, and it essentially worked for a time. So the ALS has the skill set of sort of pulling a lot of different technologies together, um, and that's what is required in, in this particular instrument. This picture shows the x-rays passing through the end of the instrument, produce a radiogram on a scintillator that is then Im imaged onto a camera. And it's able to image in three dimensions on the micron scale, materials being pulled apart or compressed uh, when they're at about uh, 2,000 degrees centigrade. Samples have to be a cylinder, which could be, say, about 15 millimeters long by, say, 2 to 5 millimeters in diameter. And the heating is done by uh, six uh, projector lamps that are mounted in a hexapole fashion. So uh, tomography basically gives us the three-dimensional information of the sample. Uh, specifically in this experiment, uh, we gain insight into where the cracks occur, where the micro cracks occur, how the fibers break, and wh at what instance they break, at what load they break. It has temperature capacity in terms of measuring the properties of structural materials, which is several hundred degrees hotter than that I've seen before. We can do it in three dimensions. I mean, what more could you ask?